on the topic of physical media, um, going back to the collector side of things, Castlevania on NES on eBay sold for ninety thousand dollars open auction. Wow! And at first, that is crazy. That's insane. Uh, we know who bought it, mm-hmm. and it will be paid. Yeah, ninety thousand dollars raw on eBay. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, anyone who wants to hang tape, hang tab Castlevania knows the struggle (laughs) you know where else can you that's like that's one of those things that's just really difficult to find and ask for i think it's pop five or six yeah i was seeing different if if vga would ever publish a freaking pop report man we'd know but it's either five or six yeah is the last word on it yeah yeah and what were people thinking the grade of this would be no it's going to be one of the top copies okay this is going to be like anywhere from 9.0 to 9.4 Okay. So as far as like it's it's beautiful, beautiful yeah. as bad as good as you could hope. Yeah, yeah. So really a a treasure, and I think for someone who bought it as an investment or even just to flip it, they'll definitely have room. Dad, do you think you could just flip it right now? I think you could throw that thing on heritage. Yeah, is that like yeah? You yeah, think make a, make another fifty grand or something? <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Is like when you sell something like this on eBay, uh, you don't reach. The right people, I yeah. guess is the way I would put it. Yeah. Like the Alexis Ohanians of the world probably aren't bidding on eBay auctions. No, I don't think so. Because, you know, the, it's uh, not like eBay. eBay doesn't send you catalogs or stuff. It's like Heritage will actually mail you a catalog. You can flip through it and be like, oh, I'm bidding on that. Everything's catered to you. Yeah. Like you being a million dollar client, yeah. uh, you get, you know, every, I, I get the call. I get the books too. What am I, you know? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, they, they shouldn't send me the books. God knows I'm not buying anything in there. But... <laughs> For these people who have the actual money to do it, yeah, the entire auction experience is an experience. Going back to like kind of GameStop with the boutique experience, that's kind of what you get from these auction houses. Yeah. Everything's online, but you get this catered... <clears throat> um, it's a catered, cohesive experience by yeah. people who care about that stuff. Exactly. And they're going to make sure that you as a customer are like having fun with it. Like, oh, here's your magazine. Like, here's the auction dates. Like, yeah, it, it is. It's its own experience, too, to go bid on these things. But when you throw something like this on eBay, especially raw, because I feel like, again, a lot of the big players just don't want to mess with it. Yeah. Because like, why would you? Yeah. eBay doesn't have the, uh, the checks and balances in places to protect buyer and seller. If anything actually does happen at the scale of $90,000. Uh, be it mail lost, the game was fake for some reason, just whatever it is, There's right? There's so much risk. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I my first thought, too, was like, that's strong for eBay, $90,000. I didn't, I didn't think it would crack 100 It just sounded fake for yeah. eBay. It's just like, ah, it, probably not. Like, Castlevania, $90,000. Does Castlevania deserve it? I mean, it's one of the OG greats. Um, I don't know if it's as relevant as yeah, it like used how, to be. How, how does Castlevania stack up now? Yeah. Yeah. Castlevania is a series that maybe could be reinvented for the modern era. Like, I feel like there's an opportunity there because there really hasn't been many games in the last. Like, when was the last one? 360? What was the last one? It's that 360 game. In my I'm head, sure. I have Lords of Shadow 2. Is that literally it? No. I think so. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, because you know what, we've had Bloodstained, which is the next best thing. Oh, I, I, that is by Konami, right? Do they have anything to do with? I actually don't know. I need to look up the most recent Castlevania game here. Yeah, now. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I don't know if uh, Konami actually had anything to do with it, but they certainly marketed themselves as a Castlevania style game because you have Tom Dubois, who was the um, American artist for all those covers, doing the artwork for those limited run game releases. Gotcha. Yeah. So there's definitely a tie in there, whether it's spiritual or actually uh, by the company. I don't know. Yeah. Lords of Shadow 2 was the last mainland game in the franchise to date. And that's 360? 2014. Yeah. 360 PS3. Yeah. Like, due to Konami shifting focus to mobile games and gambling in the 2010s. <laughs> like, <laughs> I hate that they're a just machine, what machine or whatever. It's just like, why? Oh my God. Yeah. Just give us more Castlevania games. No pachinkos. Yeah. So, yeah, Dead Cells Return to Castlevania. I don't know what that even means. Dead, dead That's Cells a crossover. Return. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, with Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is the closest thing I guess we have to a 
Castlevania still. Yeah. That's insane to me. Yeah. Like, wasn't the Netflix show really good? I think I watched like a it was summer season one. Yeah. Maybe I watched all of season one. Like, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Yeah. Really, like, heartfelt, too. Like, there were some moments there when I was like... <laughs> I did like, oh not my expect God, to with, cry tonight. <laughs> yeah, with, like, Dracula and his son. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, you know, there's some real deep stuff here. So. I, I just... I, I, it, I, learning that Lords of Shadow 2's last game is baffling to me. This yeah. is blowing my mind. Yeah. Yeah. How has it been dormant for 10 years? Yeah, it's like the perfect... It's the perfect property to give to a AAA developer to really God of War style it. You know, come out with something totally new. It would perfectly fit the formula of modern God of War. Yeah. You could do the, a very similar thing. Yeah. It has such good characters, such good world. Mm-hmm. You could make a, an extremely compelling video game that's like 20 to 30 hours gone. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> I know what you meant. Yeah, you know what I'm saying there. <laughs> <laughs> you could do something real special with Castlevania. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I think it's inevitable that the game will be brought back. The franchise name itself is too big. Yeah. It has to come back in some way. Yeah. yeah. Um, that would be the only thing that would give me pause as a long-term holder of something like that would be the relevance of the franchise. But you know what? I think, I think it's forever going to be known as a holy grail for NES collectors and especially in hang tab. So I, I kind of feel the same way when you get to certain games that transcend yeah like you just like oh this is like now. stadium events it's, yeah it like is it's, what it it's is. locked in yeah whether you care about it or not like i i will never own stadium events i yeah. just don't care yeah you know for the 16 20 000 for a cartridge whatever it costs now 15 to twenty thousand for a cartridge um oh man there's a lot of stuff i'd rather buy <laughs> yeah right that's all it comes down Me too. to i'd just rather buy i'd rather buy you know some random comic art and stuff like that there you go right yeah i'd sooner have a mint mario 64 yeah. Like people dunk on it, but like I would rather have that. If I'm spending $20,000, yeah. I'd rather have something I really care about yeah. rather than um, the game that we all care about because it's rare. Yeah. It, yeah it, I, nothing against stadium events, but just We've as railed I get, on it before. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as I get older with collecting, I try to, I'm trying yeah. to care more about things I actually care about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want, you want to feel something, you know, when you own yeah. something. It's like and stadium. Castlevania resonates with me. Yeah. Not that I played it a ton, but it's like, man, that's like, yeah, like that's Castlevania. It's great art. That's it. It's a great gray box, you know, Metroid, Castlevania, all those titles had these great uh, cover art and kind of unique look to them on the NES system. So I already have the Famicom disc one, too, because it's like it's it's Castlevania. Yeah. So, of course, I went back and got the Japanese like. That's a, that's where it originated, you see. So you, everyone should pump Japanese games. <laughs> it's the first <laughs> yeah, it's print. The first print. You got <laughs> who wants this uh, North American crap for ninety thousand? You can go yeah. buy a first print for like five hundred bucks. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Crazy. You know, and it's 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 that that fact that um, makes it a bit less sophisticated than book collecting. Because like when you when you look at it, like if you want to collect Harry Potter or uh, Tolkien books. You know, you go to the UK. That's where they were first published. Mm-hmm. That's where the most valuable editions are. Um, games are kind of a different animal, you know, because I think just the the prevalence of the collector base in the North America has decided. Yeah, it's that's what's really fueled the market. Pretty much. Yeah. Is it, are there such a thing as North American printed Harry Potter books? Oh yeah, for sure. Are they because like, they changed the name? Right. Like the Philosopher's Sorcerer. Stone is Sorcerer. Sorcerer's Stone. So first print Sorcerer's Stone. Does that have? It has value for sure, but nothing like the original UK. Yeah, and there was the, a... the, the art is different too. They did their own artwork. They don't look quite as like fun as the UK. Okay. The UK and Canadian versions have the same artwork. Yes, and I've I've sort of gotten into collecting the Harry Potter series, the Canadian variants, because the first <laughs> haven't pr- you heard Canadians worthless man? I know. Like, what are you? You know, but it's so much fun. It's so difficult to find like Harry Potter in Philosopher's Stone in first print and Chamber of Secrets came out at the same time in Canada. And they had these unique blue, really? blue boards. They weren't pictorial boards like they were in the second prints. So they're, I just got a Chamber of Secrets <laughs> first print. And I've like been waiting for one to pop up at a reasonable price. Because usually like around $1,000. Oh my god, that is actually some value. Yeah, yeah. So Where'd I, you find this? Like, where'd I you... got mine from a book dealer. Like you have a relationship? No, or I just, I was following just the listing. It? And there was a, he randomly like slashed the price. It's in near fine condition. Really lovely copy slash the price to like 40 percent off i just i bought it <laughs> give like, me that yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah why not oh no i mean sure yeah that's cool that's cool it's a really neat uh interesting niche that i don't think has really been exploited yet did you say exploited or explored both 
<laughs> so yeah. Exploited, Why are we going after sure, these books again here? Explored, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why are we going after these books again? You're yeah. just a diehard collector, right? That's the <laughs> I just really care about it. Yeah. It's Why just has fun. no one exploited this? It's just fun. Because you know what? I I was in a thrift store the other day and I I found a first print paperback of Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> Never seen one exist before. Yeah, that's crazy. It's like, wow, well, okay. Cool. If you can go into these categories that still aren't exploited, uh, then <laughs> you can you can have a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's just fun. It's it almost is. like VHS hunters who just like. I think that's why there's so much anger there too now. Yeah, it's like I used to go into a thrift store and buy. I used to buy great stuff for nothing. Yeah. But now everyone knows about the great stuff. Yeah. And it's, so like, it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. so angry. <laughs> kind of takes away some of the fun when you're not the only one having it. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's um. It's one of those things that just requires knowledge. You know, you need to know what to look for. Absolutely. So, and anyone can learn it. That's the thing. Like, you're not special because you're out there buying it. It's like, man, anyone can learn this. Yeah. Then it just becomes how much time do you want to sink into hunting? Yeah. And do you actually enjoy that process? I, exactly. Yeah. And if you don't, like, stop, stop, just stop. Yeah. If you don't, just stop because you're going to waste your time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's more of a waste of time than anything else. Yeah. Do you think we'll see the Castlevania pop up on the market now that we know who bought it? I, oh man, I, is Tom listening? Like, <laughs> does he, does he listen to this the podcast here? Um, I don't think he will. I don't know. I've only spoken to him sparsely so far. Yeah. I'm, hopefully me and him are going to sit down and like do the whole story of, um, where these games are coming from. Cause if you saw the eBay listing, they posted up a lot more stuff than just Castlevania. There's like an $11,000 burger time hang tab. Right. There was a uh, Trojan. I didn't actually realize it was the same seller. Yeah. Okay. Trojan went for 6000 That was a hang tab copy. Really early Capcom. Uh, there was Predator, Rambo, Gauntlet, Tengen. There's probably like 15 games or so. Um, all from the same seller. Really nice condition. Some really early, really rare stuff. So I'll get the full story, hopefully. Yeah. And be able to talk about that more. But my guess is that Tom will hold it. Yeah. That I is wouldn't my be, I guess. wouldn't be surprised. He got it for a price that I think you can hold it. Like, say you had to pay 120 130 getting closer to what it might go for at the auction house. It's like, maybe just flip it, make ten grand, and, you know. Get out. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the capital cost is so much higher. Exactly. Like, I can't afford 130 anyway, so but I can make some money. I can leave. Uh, call it quits. Hopefully at 90 uh, he can stomach it. Yeah. And actually keep it. Actually hold it. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> That's my gut on that. I hope, I, I think he will. I think he will. Yeah. Put it that way. I think it's, it's one of those titles that you'd be very hard pressed to pry from another collector. So you won't. Yeah. You just won't. Yeah. Um, one of them, I don't know if you saw my video. One of them's owned by uh, Eric Nyerman, the dentist that okay. was in the Carl Jobs video. Yeah. One of them's held by the owners of Comic Connect. I'm okay. pretty sure it's in the hands of Vincent Zerulo. Zerulo. Yeah. Metropolis. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That person. Yeah. I, I actually visited their uh, office when I oh, was Oh, really? Here. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Did you uh, get to talk to Vincent? No. Oh, no, okay. I didn't. It was but, on uh, site. I just went there randomly. I was just like, just to check it out. Yeah. Fair. I would go too. Why not? Yeah. Um, but so they brought theirs to market like a few years ago for 1.25 million. Um, I don't know if it ever traded hands or not. Yeah. If it did, it went to another... That's a big pandemic price, but you know what? Oh, it is. You bet it is. uh, I wouldn't be shocked if someone pulled the trigger on it. Even even if it went for like 750,000, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Like not shocked at all. It was extremely very likely worth that price. You know what I mean? Like worth that that that, price. Yeah, in that that time. In that context at that time, it was worth that price. Yeah. Because we've seen a lot of people pay prices that it was worth back in the pandemic and... We saw a lot of it played out, but yeah. if it did trade hands, undoubtedly it went to another person who can afford to just sit on it. Yeah. So that's two of them locked up. That's three right there with the new one. Um, that's it. You have three other copies and I think they're in long-term collections. Yeah. Because these are owned by the old VGA guys. Yeah. Right. Truthfully. Yeah. That's who has this stuff. Yeah. It's people, people who've been people in the who hobby probably for 15 have, years. Oh, you know, very little money into it. They don't. Yes. They don't feel pressure to sell it. When you pay 2000 or even less probably for some of these, right? When you're into it for a grand, two grand, it's like, well, the only time you're ever going to sell it is for a major cash out. Yeah. And if you are financially stable and like, you're just not going to sell, yeah. just keep it. Yeah. Just truthfully, it probably will go up in value. Probably. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. You're, yeah, you're I'm willing sure to. I'm sure Yeah. <laughs> Such a low population, you know, first print key title. I, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked. 
Yeah. If there were like, if there were 10 to 15 copies, 10 to 20, I think it'd be different. I agree. Because you're you're buying, your buyer's pool uh, drops immediately after that. Yep. But with as limited as it is, I think it's very safe. As long as the hobby, I mean, uh, collectibles are staying. They're not going anywhere. This is not going anywhere. Graded games aren't going anywhere. Yeah. It'll go up in value. (laughs) Yeah. Something like that. You know, it's, there are, there are so many other markets that are so much smaller than game collecting and they have, you know, million dollar treasures easily. All it takes is a few people with money to fight over something. Yep. That's all it takes. Two or three people. Exactly. And now that, um, we went through this wave one, if you want to call it, where like everyone knows about it now, it all, you know, how I said with the, uh, Pokemon cards, everyone knows graded Pokemon cards exist, even the most casual of people. Now it's like, ah, most people are aware of graded video games now. It's still not nearly as ubiquitous, but it's in people's minds. Yeah. The value is there. The collectability is there. Like, hey, I should really take care of this. Hey, this might be worth grading. Only going to get bigger from here. The seed has been planted. But I'll leave you guys with that. Thank you so much for listening this week. Make sure to rate the podcast. If you guys are listening on the YouTube, make sure to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. It helps out everything. And uh, I'll see you guys next week.